our 21 days of Bible boot camp is significant simply because it takes 21 days. It really does. It takes 21 days to start a habit or to cultivate a habit. And if you've been doing this for 21 days, then you are in the habit now of waking up five o'clock every morning to be a part of this experience. I want to also share with you that after you do something like this, after at five o'clock, it then seems as if you don't need your alarm clocks anymore. It seems like you're just waiting to get up. Uh, and it's, it's so beautiful when you can develop a habit that gives you the opportunity to be closer to Christ. And this morning, we give everyone that opportunity of being closer to Christ, of waking up, being a part of this worship experience, to be closer to him more than ever before. And so this morning, I welcome you to our 21st day of Bible boot camp, developing a habit that can never go away unless you develop another habit over this one. In that, welcome to Bible boot camp. We want to pray right now. We want to pray that everyone has this opportunity of getting closer to Christ and starting this morning with him. And I believe that God wants us to start this morning with him because we believe that mornings are better when you talk to God first. Try him. Mornings are better when you talk to God first. And so this morning, we start with God first. I want to start with a prayer that simply says, Dear God, today I woke up. I'm alive. I'm blessed. I apologize for all my complaining. I'm truly grateful for all you have done in my life. That's our prayer today, that we're thanking God for all that you've done. Let's bow our heads together as we look to God, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Let's pray together. Father, again, we come before you thanking you for being a great God to us, for being a good God to us, for being an awesome God to us. And this morning, we have had this opportunity to wake up and start this morning with you. We say this morning that we put our hands in your hands. We put our situation in your hands. We start this morning with our, uh, with our lives in your hands. And we're grateful. Be with us this very morning. Strengthen us and bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. And so this morning, we simply say to each one of you that we are in uh, revival dealing with repentance. And all month long, we've been talking about repentance. All month long. We've been talking about repentance. We believe that repentance is the act of repenting, sincere regret or remorse. But we also have been saying to each one of you, to everyone, that there's a difference between regret and change. God does want us to regret the things that we do that we should not do. But God also wants us to change the things we do and move into a place where he's proud of us. So I challenge each one of you today to live a life of repentance. You know, someone sent this to me the other day, and we believe on this old, beautiful hymn that used to say, Morning by morning, new mercies I see, all I have needed, thy hand have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Has God been faithful to you? Real quick question. Has God been faithful to you? And if God has been faithful to you, then I want you to just name one thing that God has been faithful to you with. What is one thing, just name one thing, that God has been faithful to you with or about? What has God done for you that you've been faithful, uh, that you believe he's been faithful for? And I want to share this song with you, a beautiful song. I was on YouTube the other day and I saw this, this person singing this and putting this beautiful a cappella song together. And I want to share it with you this morning. A beautiful song this morning that says, I need thee every hour. And while you listen to this song, take the time to write. Just write and share with one, one another how God has been faithful to you. I need the every hour most gracious Lord Tender voice like mine 
from his high school basketball team. He went home, locked himself in his room, and cried. He wasn't able to speak until he was almost four years old, and his teachers said he would never amount to much. Was demoted from her job as a news anchor because she wasn't fit for television. fired from a newspaper for lacking imagination and having no original ideas. At age 11, he was cut from his team after being diagnosed with a growth hormone deficiency, which made him smaller in stature than most kids his age. At 30 years old, he was left devastated and depressed after being unceremoniously removed from the company he started. A high school dropout whose personal struggles with drugs and poverty culminated in an unsuccessful suicide attempt. A teacher told him he was too stupid to learn anything and that he should go into a field where he might succeed by virtue of his pleasant personality. Rejected by Decca Recording Studios, who said, we don't like their sound, they have no future in show business.
his first book was rejected by 27 publishers. His fiance died, failed in business, had a nervous breakdown and was defeated in eight elections. If you've never failed, you've never tried anything new. I believe, I believe, first of all, by that beautiful song, I Need Thee Every Hour, that song was sent for each one of us because our claim in our lives is that we need Jesus every hour. I need him. Oh, I need him every hour. I need him. Oh uh, boy, what a good God that we serve. Because when we say that we need him, he always steps in right on time. That's the kind of God that we serve. I also believe that so many of us, so many of us, because we failed in our lives, in certain certain aspects in our lives, we feel like failures. And I want to share with each one of you that there are individuals in life who have failed at certain things before, but we understand and know that God has given us the victory. Beautiful, beautiful song. Uh, and so many of you have sent in why you're at, why you believe that God has been faithful to you. And others wrote that he woke me up. He, he wakes me up every day. He keeps me in my right mind. He blessed me with family and friends. Others have uh, uh, wrote that he answers my prayers. Wow, beautiful. Others are saying that they're thankful for families that um, thank him for being an overcomer. Uh, we do have victory. And I believe that God is faithful to us, but God is waiting for us to be faithful to him. I want to share a word with you, if you don't mind, a word that will help us in understanding that our belief in God helps us holistically about being overcomers. I want to share this with you right now. And for those who are on our uh, Facebook page and those who are on our, our Twitter page and even those who are on with us at Periscope, I want to ask you to share this with someone, not only right now during this broadcast or during this time, but also share it even afterwards with others. At this time, I want to bring this word to you. Let's bow our heads together. Father, again, we bring this word to you, a word that represents you and your message. In Jesus' name, amen. This word comes from 1 John, 1 John uh, chapter 5, 4 to 5. A beautiful word, a word that simply says, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? The word says only the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God. Only the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God. We believe that God wants us to be overcomers, which means the very thing that you believe that's holding you back from that relationship with God that you need to have, the very thing that's holding you back is the very thing that God says that you can overcome. Wow. You ever had a cold or about to feel that the flu is coming on or, or, or you ever exercised in such a way that your body began to hurt? And you said to yourself, hey, I've got to get through this because there's nothing you can do by getting uh, except get through it. You can overcome that pain by taking uh, medicine. You can overcome that pain by getting in the shower and feeling that temporary relief. But another way that you can get through that pain is simply relying on rest, <laughs> simply relying on rest. And a lot of us simply won't rely on taking our stuff and and resting it in Jesus, putting our stuff and taking our stuff and putting it in Christ. And a lot of times that we don't overcome is because we keep trying to fight this thing on our own. And I want you to know that God is telling us that once you believe in one stronger than you, once you believe in one who have already overcome, then we too can become overcomers. I mean, many times when you look at yourself and many times you look at your past failures, you look at your past failures and you say, I can't do this. I cannot make it. I cannot, uh, I cannot attain. And the truth of the matter is when you think about it, you can't attain on your own, but you can make that choice on your own to attain. 
Because once you put your God will do the rest. You see, I believe that God has given us the power of choice. And not only has he given us the power of choice, but he's given us that power of choice that comes with help along the way. The word of God says that help also begins with a belief in a God that can do all things, in a belief in a God that can save us, in a belief in a God that can uh, help us to be overcomers. So I want you to think of that one thing in your life that you feel that you cannot overcome, that one issue in your life that you think you can't uh, um, make it with. And I want you to look at this word again. And I want you to marinate in this word and understand for everyone born of God overcomes the world. Everyone born of God can overcome. That's the word right there. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Now, let me show you what the victory is. The victory is in our faith in a God that can do all things. Who is it that overcomes the world? Well, here it is. The one that overcomes the world is the one who believes in the Son of God. So the question is, do you believe in yourself or do you believe in the Son of God? Do you believe that you can overcome or do you believe that you're just a failure? Do you believe that God has given you the power of choice that you can choose victory instead of sin? If, if, do you believe that God has given you that power of choice that you can pick the world or him? Do you believe that God has given you the power of choice that you can pick either uh, sin or salvation? Do you believe that God has given you the power of choice that you can pick being an overcomer or just being stuck in your sin? We must understand that God is the one that can help us to be overcomers. Only the one who believes in the Son of God. And so if you've been walking in the, way, in, in the way of sin, and if you've been walking and saying that I can't make it, or if you're saying that I'm just stuck and there's no way that I can make it out, I need you to know through prayer, through your reading of your word, through a life that shows, through a testimony, even through fellowship, these are ways that you can maintain your walk with God. You see, today we've reached our 21 days of Bible boot camp. And in the 21 days, we've developed habits. And in the habits that you're developing, you've got to remember that the habits keep you overcomers. So what's your habit? And what ha habit are you cultivating? I must say to you right now that God believes in you. God trusts you. God believes that you can be an overcomer. God uh, uh, also is saying to uh to you right now, that you can be an overcomer if you believe in me. So everyone born of God, right? Because if you're born of God, you can't overcome the world. The victory uh, is in the faith that we have. So how's your faith? How is your faith in God? How is your faith in him who can do all things for you? I beg of you right now that if your faith is not where it needs to be and you want to be an overcomer, just choose Jesus. Put your uh, stuff in his hands. Stop fighting and rest in him. I'm going to give you another a, a, a example of something. And I want you to share this with you because, you know, I'm not a swimmer. No, I'm not a swimmer. I, I, I don't swim. I love to swim one day. And, and, and if I can overcome my fear of the water. And recognizing that the water can overtake me. But if I understand and not have that fear, then I can start and I can swim. But if I'm swimming and I feel like I am falling or I am drowning and someone is coming to save me, I have to stop trying to swim and put my body into the hands of the one who's trying to save me. This, there's been stories that there are those who are swimming and, and then they are losing uh, their lives and drowning that, that the person saving them have to somewhat kind of knock them out so they'll just <laughs> fall limp in the hands of that Savior. And I'm saying to you that one of the reasons why we're losing this battle is because we keep on struggling and struggling and struggling when God is saying, hey, fall back on me. And I'll take you the rest of the way. And you know today that you can be overcomers. But stop fighting God. Stop fighting. Stop trying in your own strength. 
and allow the Savior, the life guard, to save you. That word tells us again, listen to that word again, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. The victory that overcomes the world and even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Be thou my vision. thou my vision be thou my vision i'm going to pray for each one of you right now believing that god can do all things and before we do this i just really want to share with you this word of the day that you can share with others this morning for my facebook page and share it to other facebook pages but i want you to recognize that if it stops you from getting closer to god then it needs to go just want to share that with you the the mindset that if it stops you from getting closer to god then it needs to go so right now, I want to pray with each one of you that we will hold on. Some people are asking for special prayers for surrender. Other people are asking for, for great habits. And other people are asking for uh, prayers concerning loved ones who are sick and loved ones who uh, have cancer and, and those who to be better husbands and better wives. And there are those who are sending their prayer requests by email. And if you're on Full Circle uh, TV right now, I'm asking you that you will send uh, your prayer request right on the bottom there which says prayer request send your prayer request or you can send it to fcmbootcamp at gmail.com that's fcmbootcamp at gmail.com where we can read your prayers send it to others so that they can also pray for you more prayer more power let's bow our heads together father again we come before you first of all thanking you for being an awesome god to us being a great god to us a god that can do all things and a god that can help us every step of the way this very morning lord we come before you because we recognize that we need you more than we've ever needed you the the hymn told us this morning that we need you every hour and it is true that we do need you every hour we're asking god that you help us to be blessed and to bless others this morning we are challenged to be overcomers and we're asking through your word that you help us to be overcomers because we need you in our lives.
time after time again, we have struggled on our own. And we ask that you will help us to do all things only through you. No longer struggling, uh, but really holding on and resting in you. I ask you now that you be with Christopher Malcolm in a marked way. We ask you that you be with Vernock as he looks to surrender himself over to you and for him to get closer to you. We ask in a special way, Lord, that you be with Lenise as she is looking for an answer of something that she's going through. And Lord, I'm asking you in a special way that she would recognize that she can be an overcomer. We're asking in a special way you be with David as he breaks a habit of sin. We're asking in a special way, Lord, that you help uh, Zara to have better habits, uh, better relationships, and more strength. We're asking that you be with one who is in ICU right now with cancer. Lord, we ask you right now that you just put your mercies on this individual. We ask you that you take away our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We ask you that you help us to be closer to you than ever before. But now, Lord, as we come to you, we want you to know that we want to live a life not of regret, but a life of change. So we ask you in a special way that you help us. Please, God, help us to live a life of change. Help us to live a life of, of repentance and help us to live a life where we will change our direction will change our thought and will change our behavior. We come before you, Lord, because we choose you today. And we're thanking you, Lord, for helping us to be overcomers. We believe and know that we can be overcomers and that we can be overcomers in you and with you. But we've got to believe in a God that's strong, a God that's great. So, Lord, we put our trust in you. The text tells us this morning, how can we be overcomers? We can be overcomers if we put our full belief in you the Son of God. This morning, we start again. We start all over again. We develop habits that makes you look good. And we ask you now that you'll just uh, hold on to us as we hold on to you. Again, Lord, we're sinking, we're drowning, but now we're resting in you. Thank you for saving us from ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. And this morning, we simply want to thank God for giving us this opportunity. We, are, we still continue to pray for Mr. Malcolm. We still continue to pray for Courtney. We pray for all those, a friend, Diane. We still continue to pray for all those who recognize that in prayer, we put ourselves in his hands. This morning, again, I want to give you the thought of the day. Again, that thought of the day is, if it stops you from getting close to God, then it needs to go. Be blessed, everyone. Walk with God and know this much that we serve a God that can do all things, a wonderful God and a blessed God. You can always go to our website at fullcircleministries.com. And as you go to fullcircleministries.com, if the Lord impresses you, uh, just give a donation, just give a little something as we look to further God's gospel in this manner. Be blessed, everyone. Walk with God and know this much, that repentance is the life that God wants us to live. But more than that, God wants us to live a life to be overcomers in him. Be blessed, everyone, and let's have a, a, an, an awesome day in him. God bless you.